Good morning, everyone. It's the final day of term. It is Monday, Thursday. Uh, this is our act of worship. It's going to take a little bit of a different form today, which I'll explain in a few seconds. But let's begin with the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, as I said, today is Monday, Thursday, and today's liturgy, you might have noticed, is at a different time of the day. It's in the morning. And that's because today, our entire school day is going to be one big act of worship. All of that will be explained a little bit more in a few moments' time. Firstly, though, I'd like to have a look back over our Lenten journey so far. We started it in lockdown, and it feels like a million years ago now, but it actually wasn't that long ago. Um, and so I thought to refresh our memories, uh, we could do a little bit of a Lenten act of worship quiz. So let's see how much you've been paying attention over the last few weeks. Question one, what was the theme of the week for the first week of Lent? Was it A, almsgiving, or B, prayer? The answer is prayer. Question number two. Over the course of Lent, we were encouraged to join in with a charity appeal um, which raised money to build water pumps around the world. But what was the name of that appeal? Was it A, Cathod Walk for Water, or B, Water Aid Walk for Witness? The correct answer is Cathod's Walk for Water. Question number three, our return to school saw the start of some new series on our YouTube channel for our afternoon prayer time. But what was the name of the one which is going to be regularly on a Wednesday? Is it A, lived in light, or B, lived in truth? Question number four, now this one is super niche, so I'll be very impressed if you can get this one. Who was the guest speaker on episode three of our called Act of Worship series? Was it A, Sister Susan, or B, Deacon Andrew? The answer is A, Sister Susan. Finally, question number five, what is the name of our chaplaincy Instagram account? Is it A, at Jesus Five Ever, or is it B, at Living Light underscore SRS? And of course, the answer is at living light underscore SRS. Please feel free to give that a follow over the Easter break to make sure that when you come back, you are going to be up to date with everything that's going to be going on uh, around school. Uh, because as the rules get lifted, we're going to be able to do more. And that is super, super exciting. Awesome. So hopefully um, you had a bit of fun with that. And uh, don't worry if you didn't get all the answers right. Some of them were particularly tough. Um, but Swarm Shooters, if you want to drop a comment maybe um, on how well your form did out of five, um, that would be great. But let's move on to today's act of worship. So as I mentioned, today is Monday Thursday. And on Monday Thursday, we remember the last meal that Jesus had with his disciples, the Last Supper. The meal was a traditional Jewish meal it's called the Passover, which you might have heard about in RE, and it happens around this time of year every single year. And a fun fact for you, the second part of the Mass is actually based on the Last Supper. But the part of the day I want to focus on isn't actually the meal itself. It's something that Jesus does as his disciples are gathered, and at this time it was an ultimate act of humility. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus knew that the Father had given him complete power. He knew that he had come from God and was going to God. So he rose from the table, took off his outer garment, and tied a towel around his waist. Then he poured some water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. After Jesus had washed their feet, he put his outer garment back on and returned to his place at the table. Do you understand what I've just done for you? He asked. You call me teacher and Lord, and it is right that you do so, because that is what I am. I, your Lord and teacher, have just washed your feet. You then should wash one another's feet. I have set an example for you, so that you will do just what I have done for you. I am telling you the truth. Slaves are never greater than their master, and messengers are never greater than the one who sent them. Now that you know the truth, how happy you will be if you put it into practice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What I love about this piece of scripture is two particular things. The first is Jesus, the literal Son of God, like the highest authority um, around, putting himself at the bottom and leading by example and showing to us that to love people, we have to serve them and put them before ourselves. The second is the absolute wild foreshadowing it does uh, for what's going to happen over the next few days. Jesus, the Son of God, the most superior person um, on earth, 
goes down and puts himself at the bottom for everyone else. And that's what he does when he dies on the cross only a day later. Good Friday, tomorrow. Unfortunately, we're not in school for Good Friday, uh, but we are gonna recognize and reflect on Jesus' death on the cross today. You might have heard the expression before, when Jesus died on the cross, he saved all of us. And I don't know about you, but sometimes that can be a little bit challenging to understand. Jesus, a guy who was alive 2,000 years ago, died on a cross and somehow that saved me. And how does that add up? But to understand it, we have to understand the importance of what Jesus did in a little bit of a wider context. At the Passover, every year, the Jewish people would sacrifice a lamb. And this was a way of saying sorry to God and allowing themselves to move on from all of the wrong things that they had done. And Jesus took this to the next level. Rather than um, killing a lamb, um, Jesus, the lamb of God, as you might have heard him being called before, laid down his own life and sacrificed himself as the sacrifice. And if we go into a slightly deeper level with this, sorry if I'm deeping you out with this, because Jesus is the son of God, it then makes that sacrifice immeasurably more powerful, which is why we believe as Christians that Jesus' sacrifice was enough to take away all of our sins, not just those living 2,000 years ago, because God is outside time and space. All of our sins. Hopefully I didn't go slightly too deep there, but it's important to understand and, and recognise the importance of Jesus' sacrifice that he made and why it actually has an impact on us today. Because now that we know the things that we've done wrong are forgiven, we can rest and be at peace in God's love. So today we're going to reflect on what we want to move on from and leave behind today, but also focus on the hopes for the future. I don't know about you, but since the 29th of March a few days ago and those rules slightly shifted, everything seems to be a little bit more glowing and positive, not just because the sun's out. Um, and there's a real new renewal sense of hope in the world. And that is exactly what the Easter message is, a new renewed message of hope. So I'd like to think about what your hopes are for the future, what you're excited for, what are you passionate about, and when you thought of both these things, the things you want to leave behind and the things you're hopeful for, I would like you to write them on a piece of paper which looks a little bit like this. They're double-sided, so write a draw on the corresponding sides and um, what you either want to leave behind or what you're hopeful for. And then when you finish doing that at the end of full time, I'd like to put them into your blazer pocket. Um, because later on, um, we're going to have um, an activity with the cross um, in the hall, which you will be invited to one class at a time, um, to reflect on how Jesus' death on the cross allows us to leave these things behind and have hope for the future. So, off you go. That is it for this form time. I will see you later on. And I hope you enjoy discussing uh, your hopes for the future. See you later. Bye.